Good morning, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. Today is Saturday, the 6th of May, 2023. It is 11.05am here in Australia. I hope you're well. I hope you're blessed. Um, I just wanted to jump on this morning and give you guys encouragement and um, just want to share some information with you guys not to be disappointed. I know a lot of watchmen and a lot of watchwomen were seeing the 5th of May and the full moon. Um, as a significant and time for our rapture and deliverance um, but I just want to remind you brothers and sisters as you've been watching my videos and I've been showing you the true calendar that indeed this full moon here in May 5th was actually the first day of the first month and I'm going to run over that quickly again in this video because I think it's of high importance that we're actually looking for true Passover um, I know that on the Jews calendar yesterday was uh, second Passover and there was a big hype about that but again I've been reminded in the spirit father showed me this calendar and we've, I've got to stick with it as as exciting as these new watch days have been um, brothers and sisters I really, really, really need you to see what Father has shown me in regards to his true time clock and how mathematically perfect it can be proven. And I just want to encourage you with it because the window has not closed, brothers and sisters. It has not closed. And I want to go over this now and make a quick video to encourage you and to show you that we are indeed in the window, big time. It's moments away. And to be honest, brothers and sisters, after the time that I'm about to tell you comes and goes, I cannot see it happening for another year because Passover is where it's at. It's literally where it's at. We can't, all the other feasts, yes, they sound awesome. The Feast of Trumpets sounds awesome because you're blowing trumpets or whatever and you're gathering the assemblies. Yes, that all sounds awesome. But its its center point is Yeshua Jesus Christ okay and when he went to have Passover with his disciples he said how I desire to have this meal with you and I will not eat and drink again until I do it with you in the kingdom of heaven we have to remember the Passover is where it's at we have been so lied to in regards to the dates the times the calendars the seasons everything that's why they manipulate the weather so that we don't know what season we're in that's why they manipulate the calendar so that we don't know what date we're in this is why i believe father said you know in regards to he's going to come no man knows the day and I know that means the day the heaven and earth pass away, but I think it also can relate to this because the Satan has done such a good job with deceiving times and laws. But Father is good and he has told us that there's nothing he will do without first telling us first. So, um, and also too, I truly believe that these high watch dates that come and go are there for the glory of Father God. Um, the the last remaining uh, separation of the wheat and the tares, those that will fall away, um, and this has to continue right until the last moment. Okay, because we're talking about the kingdom of heaven here, brothers and sisters. We're talking about eternity. We're talking about being in the presence of Almighty God, and our loving Lord and Savior Yeshua Jesus Christ, His precious Son. This is no small feat that we're about to go into. So we need, we need to be, show ourselves worthy, okay? And we're only worthy by believing in the blood that covers us from Yeshua Jesus Christ. So I'm going to do again a moon study and tell you how important, brothers and sisters, the full moon is in that it indeed represents the first day of each month, not the slither of the moon. And excuse the noise from the background, I live on a highway now, so you're going to hear trucks and cars and whatever. Um, so, so I'm going to preface this and start again by telling you the most important thing for you to understand that the full moons are indeed the first day of each month. And the reason that is, is because when Father created them um, on day four, he created two great lights. Okay, two great lights, not the great light of the sun and the slither of the moon, 
two great full abundant lights okay one to rule the day and one to rule the night and that was their first day of creation hence being the first day um, of each month okay a full abundant full of light okay absolutely perfect when you have a full moon it's very easy where no matter where you are whether you're in today's generation or if you're an Israelite in the wilderness to see on a full abundant moon a big bright moon you would have been able to see that in the desert in the wilderness um, 3,000 years ago 2,000 years ago or today in the present day okay the big full moon is also seen throughout the whole day and see you don't see the sun at night do you so this is why it's so important when it's a full moon you get to see the full moon and the full sun throughout the whole day it's very incredible it's there to show you brothers and sisters it's a marker to say this is the beginning of months for you okay the beginning marker in heaven the moon is for the seasons and and for the um for the moons the months the beginning of the months okay so basically in saying that um i will come back to ezekiel 41 where we can have a look see the translations in the bible where it talks about um and in the day of the new moon it shall be opened a lot of people refer to the new moon as the slither of the moon but again that is nowhere found in scripture it is literally not found in scripture um, you do a, um, a word study on the word new moon I'll just go back here because people say that because in the Talmud that's actually where people the Jews got it from okay it's a tradition from Babylonia um, to witness the slither of the moon that's where it's from from the Talmud and you have a look here when I did the word study of the new moon it's um, you know you'll find on hebcow.com or chab org which is like all the jewish sites right um, that they will tell you that moses and aaron got instructed to have a look for the slither of the moon that is not true brothers and sisters that is nowhere in the uh in the scriptures in the holy bible nowhere okay this is in their talmud by tradition and why because they're coming out of egypt they were coming you know the whole thing was babylon and egyptian worship pagan worship right that's where they're carrying it on from and they honor god with their lips but the heart is so far from him and so you can see over here i've typed in new moon and there's only 21 results okay which is highly significant that number and over here you can see none in genesis or exodus or leviticus okay genesis the beginning of the bible in exodus where the those uh, jewish websites say that moses and aaron received that commandment um, to look at the slither of the moon it's not even in here brothers and sisters okay the first time the new moon is mentioned is in first samuel now um so again i just want to reiterate that brothers and sisters nowhere in the word of god in the bible is the instruction to look for the slither of the moon to be the first day of the month nowhere and it's logical too when you really think about it okay because when you're in the wilderness when you're you know in the desert when you're an israelite three thousand years ago wandering around and it's a cloudy night or whatever it may be they don't see the slither so they go all right well by default then we'll make tomorrow the first day they are missing days here and there everywhere that is not how god ordained this to, to play out okay he made it extremely obvious that the full moon if it was a cloudy day a rainy day whatever it may be you will know when it's full because of the fact if you can't see it at night which you can because even um, in clouds you can see the big bright moon behind it and when the clouds sort of blow across you do get a chance to see it's uh, the moon in its abundantness right and also over the day so god is a double he doubly makes sure that you can see the big full abundant moon marking the first day of each month okay and um so i went through all the scriptures 
And I think that, that Satan wants to confuse you, okay? Remember, he is the father of lies. Every single thing, and you should know this by now, every single thing is back the front, inside out, or reversed. That's how Satan does it. So what the Jews call a new moon, which is full Persian, the media, uh, Persian media, Babylonian, Iraq, Islamic, they go by the slither. That's why they have the crescent moon on above the mosque and stuff like that. It's full pagan. Okay. <clears throat> they are looking for the darkness. We are looking for the light, brothers and sisters. So when they have written new moon and told us that it is the dark moon that creates the new moon, it's back the front. It's inside out. And it's turned us onto a wild goose chase that has no logic behind it at all so what i if you do your own research right and i i prayed to god and i asked him father please i really want to know this truth i, I know this truth i understand it but i want you to be able to give me something where i can show my brothers and sisters your beautiful children this truth in a matter of fact Okay, and when I came down here to Ezekiel um, 46.1, we'll go in context and I'll read it. And it says, Thus said the Lord God, The gate of the inner court that looketh towards the east shall be shut on the sixth working day. But on the Sabbath it shall be opened, and in the day of the moon it shall be opened. Okay, so this is absolutely beautiful, okay? <clears throat> so we know that the gate of the inner court that looks towards the east shall be shut the six working days. So for six working days, the inner court that faces the east, that gate is going to be shut. But on the Sabbath, it shall be opened and in the day of the new moon. Okay, so if you are looking for the new slither of the moon, you're going to be completely off onto this prophecy. Okay, because like I said, explained to you before, if there's um, cloudiness or whatever, then they, the Jews will go, oh, okay, by default, it's the next day. That's, God did not ordain this, okay? And this makes perfect sense. This makes perfect sense when you read this in uh, logical, chronological order, okay? Chronological order, sorry. Um, the Sabbath is the seventh day, right? So if the new moon, like I suggest, is a full abundant moon, is the first day, that works perfectly, doesn't it? If the Sabbath is the seventh day, the new moon will be the first day. So this is, in, in fact, saying the weekend, right? Saturday and Sunday, what we call it on our Gregorian calendars. I know Father doesn't call it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He calls it day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, right? But just for the the understanding, the simple understanding, the layman's terms, I'm going to call it Saturday and Sunday. So this makes it very clear, brothers and sisters, that the six days that, um, you know, that the, um, what do you call it? That the... Um, the six working days, the inner court gate that faces towards the east shall be shut. But on the Sabbath or the Saturday, it shall be opened. And in the day of the full moon, it shall be opened, which is the first day. So the seventh day and the first day, it shall be opened. So once a month, there was a celebration, right? And we can read this when we go back to the study of all the new moon scriptures in the word of God that we're supposed to have a feast to celebrate this new moon okay we're not celebrating the dark moon and we're not celebrating the slither of the moon which is a pagan um a pagan worship from babylonia we are celebrating god's beautiful abundant moon that he made create in uh, you know in the first days of creation okay that's what we're celebrating and we celebrate that once a month and there's a festival for that and he loves it. And see, this is why the enemy and all the pagan people and all the wicked people do their full moon parties. 
Okay, they do everything to despite Father God. This is why the the gays and the lesbians and all that and the homosexuals, whatever, will use the rainbow. Okay, the rainbow that Father promised us and gave us as a token of uh, a promise. They will use it for their pride flag. Everything, brothers and sisters, we have to be open minded to see this. And this is why they will do all their orgies and their pagan dances and their celebrations and their feasts and all the wicked people, right, on full moons. And this is why the, you know, they show the horror movies on the full moons and everything like that. Because they want to demonize and they want to degrade Father's holy feasts. Okay, it's a celebration of the first day of its creation. You're not worshipping the moon. I'm not saying that in the least. But you are worshipping Father God for his creation, what his, his beauty in the heavens that he created as a signpost for us. Okay, so here I'll show you on Stellarium. Okay, we're going to go down an hour. So here's twilight in the afternoon, right? And this is on the 5th of May, so we can know this is the, the full abundant moon showing us that this is the first day of the first month, okay? So we've got the 5th of May here, and it's afternoon, it's just on sunset, so we're going to go up in time now, it's going to get dark, and look, the moon is rising in the east, okay? The moon is rising in the east, and this is what this... Um, this verse in the scriptures is showing us the gate in the inner court that looketh towards the east shall be shut the six working days but on the sabbath it shall be opened and in the day of the new moon it shall be opened remember what i said the moon the full abundant moon is there visible in the day as well and if to prove it again we'll go here and have a look at the um at the dark concealed moon okay we'll go back to the 20th april the 20th and i'll show you how that rises and sets okay for one you can't we'll, we'll type in the moon where's the moon okay it's down here all right it's under the horizon we can't even see it so we're going to make it rise and set and i'll show you what i mean Okay, so here's the sun, here's the dark moon. We're going to rise now. We're going to rise in the east. Okay, now the sun and the moon are rising in the east because when the moon is dark and concealed, it rises and sets with the sun. You cannot see it, brothers and sisters. Okay, you cannot see this. Oh, I've got it on the 21st, there, so we'll put it back to the 20th. It's completely invisible. So this could not mean... Um, and on the day of the new moon it shall be opened. Why would you open it, open the gate that faces the east on an invisible moon? You wouldn't even be able to see it, right? You wouldn't actually be able to see it at all. So we're going to follow it. We're going to zoom back out again and we're going to follow it to its setting. So I'll show you. See, it rises. and it's going to set with the sun. Okay, you can't see that anywhere. But on the 5th of May, on the full abundant moon, okay, you can see that it, see here, the east, the sunset, it's rising. Okay, this is exactly what Father's talking about. When we have, when we go back here to the study of the new moon verses in the Bible, and to the and to offer all burnt sacrifices unto the Lord in the Sabbaths and in the new moon, which means the full moons. Okay, which is once a month, and on the set feasts by number according to order 
commanded unto them continually before the Lord. Um, Behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord to dedicate him to burn before him sweet incense for the continual showbread, for the burnt offerings morning and evening on the Sabbaths and on the new moons. Okay, that's full abundant moons. Okay, not the dark concealed moon, not the slither, which is a Tal Tal Talmic, Talmudic thing um, from Babylonia, right? And on the solemn feast of the Lord our God. This is ordained forever, forever to Israel. Okay, it's ordained forever. And this is why um, it talks about the in the book of Jubilees, right? It talks about because they observe the moon. Okay, meaning they're looking for the slither of the moon. They are going to go off, be off by 10 days. And they're going to go off the seasons, the Sabbaths, the months, the festivals, the years. And they're going to celebrate an abominable day on a holy day and a holy day on an abominable day. It literally says this in the scriptures, brothers and sisters. All we have to do is be logical and um, factual. You know what I mean? Our God is not a God of confusion. He set these things in the order of heaven to show us the true time clock. Um, he appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt offerings, to wit, for the morning and evening burnt offerings and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and for the new moons and for the set feasts as it's written in the law of the Lord. Okay, and afterwards offered a continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of all the set feasts of the Lord that were consecrated and of everyone that is willingly offered a free will offering unto the Lord. Okay, and it goes on and on and on. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. Okay, that's talking, um, you know, every single new moon, when you see that big, beautiful, abundant full moon, just like it was on its first day of creation, you are to blow up the trumpet, okay, in the time appointed. It's absolutely beautiful. You don't do that on a dark concealed moon or on the slither, which is a pagan Islamic Egyptian Babylonian tradition. Okay. They, yeah. Okay. So um, as we can read in Joel too. Uh, where's Joel? Oh, well, in Joel you see, you know, uh, not Joel. Yeah, in Joel. Oh no, sorry. When Father talks about the ordained feasts, right? There's three of them. There's Passover, there's Feast of Weeks, and there's Tabernacles. Okay, and each of them is celebrated on the first month, on the fourth month, and on the seventh month. Okay, and what's so special is the fact that um, I did here. <clears throat> okay, Passover the first month. Okay, day one out of 177 is the beginning of months for you. This is the command we get in Exodus, Exodus 12. Okay, today is going to be a new day, a new month of the year for you. He made it very clear there was something that we're supposed to take note of. The beginning of the months, the first day of the months are absolutely important, especially the Passover month, the fourth month and the seventh month. Okay, um, now because the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost or Shavuot, whatever you want to call it, is day 88, right? It's half of 177. So again, for those that are just seeing this for the first time, from the first day of the first month to the first day of the seventh month is exactly 177 days, right? And right in the midst of the week is day 88. That's half of 177 that is your Shavuot feast of weeks Pentecost you cannot go wrong to this right and they all fall on full abundant moons and this is why it says you you blow the trumpet on the new moons meaning the full abundant moons of each month right to to alert the community to alert the people that this is the new month for you okay and then on the Feast of Weeks, when there was blowing of trumpets louder and louder, when they had to go up to the mountains and receive the Ten Commandments, 
right? And Father God made a covenant with Israel, right? He made a marriage proposal to Israel, and then Israel went whoring after different gods, and Father ended up divorcing them. And, and then on Pentecost, Yeshua Jesus Christ made a covenant with us, and he became betrothed to us, right? This is so very special that we recognize these proper feast days on their proper days so that we're not having holy days on abominable days or abominable days on Father God's holy days. So important. And on the first day of the seventh month, blow your trumpets on the feast of on trumpets is literally called the feast of trumpets you do not want to be blowing the trumpets when you're guessing oh well i can't see the slither of the moon so i guess we'll do it tomorrow it doesn't work like that brothers and sisters they, they no wonder they're so far off on their calendar we know that we are approaching days it has to be in this year we know that we are approaching days away from the beginning or the end of the year 6000 right and we're about to go into the 1000 year millennium we know this we know this after the tribulation whatever the, the great tribulation may be whether it's three and a half years which i tend to think it is i think that we have gone through the first three and a half years as a great test a great and final test of labor and intense intense tribulation i think we all have done that to weed out the wheat and tares and then as it says in the scriptures that the antichrist is going to have the 42 year uh, 42 months sorry um reign and that's why he's wrath because he knows he's got but a short time left and that's only 42 months and we see that the 1290 days right or 1260 days rather um and speaking of 1,260 days, I think the reason Daniel talks about 1,290 days is because Father is giving us a clue that it's in a year that they've added a month to. Okay? And that's why we know we're in the season. Okay? Because when you have a look at the Chinese calendar, um, it showed that there was two months of February. They called it a leap year. When you have a look at the Jewish calendar, um you see that it's also it was a leap year in the year 2022 right and so anyway what i'm saying is father gives us clues we have to search this stuff out but what's most important brothers and sisters is everybody is under the understanding and you don't have to believe this but i'm trying to show you the proof okay not just from lean, me leaning on my own understanding but for me showing you the math the the logic the the scriptures that the first day of the first month is every full abundant moon the light okay he div father divided the light from the darkness the light is for us his kids his children and the darkness is for satan and his children right that's where they rule so we're not looking for the dark concealed moon or the slither or the tiny little fingernail of the dark moon that's ridiculous that is a um, from the Talmud again it is nowhere written in the scriptures so with all that being said brothers and sisters with all that being said now I hope I have made that clear yet again we will go back here and like I've said to you and showed you you know on the full moon the full abundant moon a hundred percent we have here it rises in the east showing us beautifully that um, the gate of the inner core that looks towards the east shall be shut six working days but on the sabbath it shall be opened and on the day of the new moon it shall be opened okay and Isaiah it also says this too i think it's 66 um, that from new moon to new moon so from full moon to full moon and from sabbath to sabbath okay the same commandment you know we're going to worship father god so it's, it's it's very important if we're going to be worshiping from full moon to full moon um in the new kingdom right that we know what the new moon is actually representing and it represents the full moon the beautiful abundant perfect in its creation you know what i'm saying so it's very important that we understand what they're referencing here by the new moon and you've got to remember 
who put this together okay the Jewish writers and and then um, the Shakespeareans and then all sorts of people you please tell me that you do not think that Satan had a hand in putting the Word of God together as well I'm not saying I'm not saying that um, that the Word of God is not completely holy and perfect absolutely it is but there's been infiltrations into translations a hundred percent and I've shown you that in in many of my videos that certain translations let I want to show you um, one for example a huge one just to show you how dangerous the translations are okay so I've got to find the verse no man whoops I'll have a look no man has seen God okay so we're going to go to this verse so I'll find out which one it is John 1 18 okay John 1 18 you watch this brothers and sisters John 1 18 okay so we're in King James Version now right so in, in King James Version it says no man has seen God at any time the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father he has declared him so the only begotten Son which is in the from the bosom of the Father okay that's where he was begotten from he Jesus Christ is the one that declares the Father because no man has ever seen him okay so we're going to take the same verse and I'm going to go to the NIV um, what's the NIV? The NIV. have a look what it says now now remember I'll read this again from King James Version no man has ever seen God no man has seen God at any time the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father he has declared him now let's go to the NIV no one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in the closest closest relationship with the Father has made him known they've they've literally add who is himself God do you understand why I feel so passionate about this Trinity doctrine there is a mass deception within the Word of God and the enemy has infiltrated it and this is what God wants you to see and seek out is the truth you must have spiritual discernment to see these things I know that the doctrine of the Trinity is something that angers a lot of people okay I've, I've seen all the people this is this is why I have none of the other watchmen and stuff ever support my work ever and if anything they have a go at me even if they don't say my name I know exactly because I'm the only one that's standing out here on the wall saying that the Trinity doctrine is is a deception and a blasphemy because there is only one God one true God and he has one and only begotten son and Jesus Christ is not God the Father okay I I will say this with the midst of prosecution that comes my way from all the other watchmen okay they want nothing to do with me because of this very belief but this brothers and sisters please see this with your own eyes we will go back to King James Version I'll show you again I need you to understand this the deception that they're doing here no man has seen God at any time the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father he has declared him then the NIV no one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father has made him known what does it say brothers and sisters those of you that add or take away from the Word of God let you be accursed okay this this is a highly significant subject that we all need to work out with our with fear and trembling 
And I'm only saying this, you are free to believe what you want. If you want to believe in the Trinity doctrine, that's fine. But Father has put this so much on my heart, regardless of the hurt, the emails, the horrible words, the people telling me I'm going to hell. Regardless of that all, I will stand on that wall and I will be the only one that stands up for the very first commandment. The Lord thy God is one, and only him shall you serve. Even his son said this. Only him shall you serve. There was plenty of opportunities throughout the word of God where Yeshua, Jesus Christ, had just said, hey, look, actually, I'm God. I'm the Father. I came down, and I'm going to die. God himself is going to die for you. No, the sacrifice is in within the son. This is why Abraham was tested with his own son, Isaac, because father was like, if a human being can love me so much that he would sacrifice his one and only son. I don't understand why people can't see this. And then they want to say that God himself came down to die on the cross for us. No, he gave his most, possess most precious possession, his one and only begotten son for us, for evil, wicked humanity. Because he loved us so much that he gave us his only one and only begotten son. The scriptures are full. The scriptures are full of no man has ever seen God. God cannot die. God is not a man. It's literally written everywhere, but people want to hold on to this doctrine because it is indoctrinated into them and they're not letting their, their spirit see the truth. Or the, the Holy Spirit teaching they'd rather be taught by man on the pulpit. The fathers of the faith through the centuries. Even a child is supposed to be able to understand the word of God. And um, I know I was talking about the moon. But Father obviously wants people to know. And I don't care about the persecution that I receive from this. I don't care about the loneliness and the fact that no one wants to include me in their club because I don't believe that Yeshua Jesus Christ, the one and only Son of the begotten, uh, as the one and only begotten Son of the living God, is God Himself. I don't care. It hurts, yes, it hurts because I'm a human. But I will take that for Father because I know, and I know His Son. I know His Son cried tears of blood to his Abba, Yabba, wa, <laughs> can't even speak, to his Abba, Papa, his father. Please, Father, please, if this any way, is this any way that I don't have to do this, please take this from me. But if it's your will, I will do it. Why would God say that to himself? Why would God cry tears of blood to himself when he could have made everybody just have a men in black moment and used a, the little light thing and erased everyone's memories or created a memory in everyone that this was done no it had to be done this way because it is the greatest gift in this entire world in this entire history of humanity was the fact that god gave his most precious possession his one and only begotten son he gave him as a sacrifice as a perfect sacrifice for our sins brothers and sisters please i beg of you please hate me all you like but please be open to the teaching of the holy spirit this is truth because i'm so terrified that this is a salvation issue because of the one and greatest commandment that the Lord thy God is one and only him you shall serve. If you are serving his son as the living God, remember Father said he's a jealous God and he's going to visit the iniquities of those generations to come. Please, brothers and sisters, please. I am in no way diminishing Jesus and his authority and his dominion and his power and his glory. He sits at the right hand side of his father's throne for goodness sake. I am in no way putting Jesus down. 
But I need you to understand that there was no one like God. There was no one like the Father. He is the Almighty One. He is the Eternal One. Always was, always will be. So, that's that. And I just, I pray that you hear and that you see these things. So, I'm going to get back to this full moon thing. Um, okay, like I said, like I've explained to you and showed you now, the full moon, it rises in the east on, you know, and so that's when the gate, the Sabbath day would be the seventh day, right? It's the day before, that's when the gate is opened. And on the first day, on the new moons, which is truly the full moons, okay? So the Saturday and the Sunday, the gate is opened. And also the prince here, and the prince shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate without, and he shall stand by the post of the gate, and the priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offering, and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate, and then he shall go forth. But the gate shall not be shut until the evening. Okay, it's that prince, he goes in through the east gate and out through the east, east gate. Everybody else, if they come in through the north, they go out through the south. If they come in through the south, they go out through the north. But the prince, okay, the prince of peace, Yeshua Jesus Christ, he comes in through the east and he leaves through the east. It's just so beautiful. So absolutely beautiful. So... Now that we know and can establish that the full moons are the first abundant, uh, the abundant full moons are the first day of each month, I'm going to show you right back from the beginning. Okay, we have the 16th of May 2022 on that blood moon. Okay, on the 16th of May 2022 on the blood moon, we add 177 days, like I showed you before. We land on November the 8th, 2022, on the second blood moon. 16th of May was the first day of the first month on the full abundant moon. The 8th of November, 2022, was the first day of the seventh month. Okay, blow your trumpets. Okay, on the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, then we're going to add another 177 days to the 8th of November. And we're going to come to... Uh, the 5th of May 2023 okay perfect mathematical calculation here you cannot go wrong with it okay we're going to add another 177 days to the 5th of May because this the 5th of May 2023 is the first day of the first month again okay now we're going to look for the first day of the seventh month so we're going to add 177 days we come to the 29th of October 2023 Again, full abundant moon, and this is the first day of the seventh month, Feast of Trumpets. Okay, the true Feast of Trumpets. The Jewish calendar is like a month to 45 days off, brothers and sisters. And this is why they're having all their beautiful, all their, um, not beautiful, all their feast days on abominable days. And this is why Father said, I hate your feast and I'm turning my face away from them. They're abominable to me. Shouldn't you want to find out the truth regardless of what you've been indoctrinated with for years and years and years and years? Okay, shouldn't you want the truth? I would pray that that is your number one concern to find the truth and to let the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, teach you in all these truths. Not me. Look at this stuff for yourself. Don't take anything I say. As truth, I'm only that I I believe that um, I I my heart is so sincere. I truly believe that I know that I know my heart, and God is my witness. He knows my heart, so He can strike me down if I'm lying. But I know there's nothing more on this earth that I want than His truth, and if His truth is the Trinity, that His Son is really Him, and He is the Son, and they're all one then I will absolutely believe that and I'll be the first to shout that from the rooftops. But he hasn't shown me this. He has shown me the complete opposite and he's shown me how sad, how sad and he is from this doctrine. And it 
It grieves my spirit, his spirit that resides in me, that people hold on to this doctrine so much. And that there's such a minority that believe this truth. That Jesus Christ is the one and only begotten son of his father. Remember, that's how we're saved by what Yeshua Jesus Christ did for us. That's how we're saved. Father said, this is my beautiful son. Believe in him. Believe in him. Not believe that he is me. Believe in him what he did for you. I gave you my son. He was up here with me in eternal paradise and I gave him for you so that he would cover you in his blood and his torture and his great sacrifice so that you may be reconciled with me. Brothers and sisters, I love you so much. Please don't ever think I want to be the odd one out, the underdog that sits over there that gets thrown the scraps. And I don't. I've had this for years. And this is the very reason I walked out of a church building in 2009. And I can never go back. And I miss it so much. I miss the praise and worship, the singing. That's actually all I miss at church is the singing and the praise and worship with other people. I miss that dearly, but I cannot walk back into a church. Even the church that I went to, the Seven Day Adventist Church, that's what I was brought up in because my parents, and I'm thankful for that because I learned about the feasts and I learned about God's, um, you know, holy appointed days. And I learned about the Old Testament a lot because that's what they do. So I'm very thankful that I was brought up in that, in that denomination. But originally, their original domination, denomination of the, the Seven-day Adventist <clears throat> uh, preached was anti-Trinitarianism. They didn't believe in the Trinity. They believed that Jesus Christ was the literal son of the living God. And then the World Council of Churches came in like it has with every other church, that you cannot be considered a Christian church if you do not promote your number one belief statement of belief as you believe in the Trinity doctrine. What does that say to you, brothers and sisters? Have a look at your, at your church's uh, statement of belief and you'll see that's the first thing, the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed. I want to find you something, actually. Okay, this is from the Nicene, which has turned out to be the Roman Catholic Catholicism and the Catholics to this day, right? One God, three persons, defined in the 4th century, Arthiantheus of Alexandria. Whoever will be saved before all things, it is necessary that he holds the Catholic faith, which faith except everyone do keep whole and undefiled, Without doubt he shall perish everlastingly. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the essence, for there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Ghost. This is the Catholic faith, which except a man truly and firmly believe he cannot be saved. Do you see the deception? Do you see the deception, brothers and sisters? I'm going to leave it at that because I, I can't explain or show you any more truth. And like I said, I showed you that I, I told you that I'm more than willing. I've got like probably 20 pages of scriptures, just scriptures of showing you that the Lord like God is one and he has a one and only begotten son, Yeshua Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross and was risen by his father and ascended to his father 40 days later. 
And then the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to all, to all those who believe as a comforter and a teacher in all things and truth. Okay, the Holy Spirit is the very spirit and essence of the living God. And he shared that with us as a gift. And we're creating him as a whole new person. It just doesn't work like that, brothers and sisters. So, and just to show you here, from the 16th of May, 2022, that blood moon in May, which was the first day of the first month in 2022, we add the 354 days, which is 177 times 2, which gives you the 12 months. Okay, you get Friday the 5th of May 2023. Perfect. Perfect. Mathematically perfect. Okay, so my big conclusion, the day that I can't go past, because after this day comes and goes... I, I can't see in the future or any other feast that can hold it until unless we have to go all the way until next year, Passover. So that day is, brothers and sisters, if the 5th of May 2023 is indeed the first day of the first month, it means that 14 days later is true Passover. And that will be on the dark, concealed moon, which I've always said is the day that Yeshua Jesus Christ was crucified on hence the reason there was a solar eclipse because the moon and the sun they rise and set together as I showed you before that will be on the 19th of May and that is the day that I had my rapture dream my one and only rapture dream which is highly amazing and significant considering rapture is my life and I've never had a rapture dream except one and I wrote it in the journal and it was on the 19th of May 2022 and I always kept it there I don't I haven't written any other dreams or anything like that I don't write them down I don't talk about dreams or anything or I never had a vision it was just one little old dream a whole year ago on the 19th of May and that is my final my final high watch the highest of highest of highest watch days that i've ever had in my entire life and after that i don't think i can be watching oh well i will be watching but i won't be making these high watch videos anymore i'm tired and i don't want to continuously um get mocked and persecuted and and all these other things I'm just going to be spending my time with father and and making I'll be still making videos but they'll be more bible study videos and things like that and just showing you the greatness of the beautiful gift the father gave us for his son but um, in regards to high watch dates I I can't and I haven't been able to see it go past the 19th of May. And if, it do, if the time comes and goes, then so be it. Father's will, his timing is perfect. Um, but Father knows my heart. Father knows my spirit. Father knows why I'm saying this and sitting here and telling you this to this day. That 19th of May is, I believe, where it's at. Because um, that, that will true on his true time clock and his true calendar that he's been showing me for over a year now. That is the last day. That is the great last day. That is the Passover. The Passover and Exodus. You know, the, the midnight cry. The, the midnight, at midnight, you know, um, Paul and Silas was released from the shackles in prison. And there was a great earthquake. And and my biggest one of all, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, to his disciples, how I desire to eat this meal with you, but I will not eat again until I do it with all of you into the in the kingdom of heaven. He is waiting for this. 
So Passover has not been completely fulfilled. All the other feasts have been completely fulfilled. It's just Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is waiting patiently to eat and drink with us again in the kingdom of heaven. And by this true calculation of calendar, the moon, the sun, the stars, directing us to the fact that May 19th on the dark concealed moon is truly Passover. Whether it's going to be when he died on the cross or three days later, because in, um, you know, in numbers, when it talks about, um, you know, going up to the, be ready on the third day, consecrate yourself and be ready on the third day, whether it's Passover or three days later, brothers and sisters, on the 22nd or the 23rd of May for Resurrection Day, I don't know. But that's it for me, brothers and sisters, in regards to these high watch dates. I can't do this anymore. My spirit is so tired and I just want to go home. So um, I'm going to leave you with this, brothers and sisters, and a quick recap. As I've shown you, 16th of May 2022 was the first day of the first month last year. 8th of November 2022 was the first day of the seventh month, both blood moons showing us in the sky. And then, um, so we added another 177 days. We came to the 5th of May 2023, which was yesterday, showing us it was the first day of the first month. Showing you here from the, uh, from the 5th, of May 2023, the first day of the first month, another 177 days to the 29th of October 2023, first day of the seventh month. It's just perfect. You know, there's no other way I can show you. And then a complete, complete year count from the 16th of May 2022, first day, first month, adding the 354 days, which is 177 times two, we get to the 5th of May 2023 first day of first month again a whole year count so I think it's Passover I think Passover is where it's at I think we um, what happened before will happen again there's nothing new under the sun I think Passover is exactly where it's at and it's where Yeshua desires to be with us to eat and drink with us again in the kingdom of heaven we could go sooner so that we're there before the true Passover. Who knows? We can only just keep praying that come, Lord Jesus, come. The bride is ready. We're ready. Our bags are packed. And we are ready to go. But um, I just wanted to bring you this video today for encouragement to show you again the truth of Father God's true time clock. And, um, you know, you can't go wrong with that because that, that's his masterpiece. That's his clock pieces on his face, right? Is the sun, moon and stars. doesn't matter whether your calendar or whatever gets lost within, you know, history. It doesn't matter. The sun, moon and stars never change. They've stayed the same. So the people in the Exodus knew and we can know to this day, the last generation. All right, my beautiful and beloved brothers and sisters, my true family, I love you so very much. You are, you are my lottery on this earth, my reward, your kindness, those of you, and there's more of you than not that are kind and considerate and respectful, whether you believe the same things that I do or not. And I appreciate you for that. Boy, do I appreciate you for that. Because I am very alone in my walk. Very, very alone. And I'm okay with that. Because I know where my rewards are. They're waiting for me in the, in the eternal paradise. But I'm sure, as I am, I know you are. We're very tired. And we just want to go home. We want to be away from this evil world. Because it's not getting any better. There's no great revival coming. 
that's another lie from the enemy that great revival is coming and you know there will be a great revival in the great tribulation i'll tell you that much all of our loved ones will be that great revival the ones who have mocked us and hurt us that's who will be the great revival because they're going to finally see just like thomas see with their eyes that we were right and they're going to want to be reunited with us again so they're going to have every bit of seed that we planted flourish in that great tribulation and that's how they're going to be saved through our great planting okay the holy spirit will be the one who waters and flourishes that all right may father bless you in heaven and his precious son may they look after you protect you and bless you abundantly if i don't see you in the next video i will definitely see you in the skies love you god bless you bye